At one time or another, you've probably heard the phrase, dress for success. It's a bit of often used advice, which basically means that you should always wear the appropriate clothes for whatever position or status that you are seeking to achieve. For example, you shouldn't attend a high-level job interview in tattered clothes, but instead you should be in a nice outfit that's appropriate for the intended vocation. Spiritually speaking, the same type of advice applies, although with a couple of twists. First, we don't really dress to attain a position spiritually. Rather, we dress because we already have a position. And second, we don't actually dress ourselves in this case, but rather we are clothed with a attire that's given to us by none other than Jesus Christ himself. This is what I want to share with you today in this study. And by seeing this truth, you'll be able to step into your new identity in Christ with fresh lenses, a fresh perspective on what Jesus has given you today. Welcome to Thriving Branch. I'm Jim. Today we are talking about dressing for success, spiritually speaking. And I made a statement in the opening that might take some people by surprise. That we don't actually dress ourselves. Yet that is exactly what many people are trying to do. Again, spiritually speaking. They're trying to dress themselves spiritually. And they're doing it mainly for the wrong reason as well. To try and attain a position or to attain favor from God. Not realizing what I pointed out in the opening of this study, that he has already given us a position as a free gift. And that Jesus is the one who clothes us let me tell you right here and now that this error is a tragic one and that this simple thing has held many people back and continues to hold millions of people back for something so very silly on the face of it. Trying to attain what has already been given. Trying to reach the finish line for a race that has already been won. Trying to reach out and grab something that has already been dropped in our lap. Or to use a more apt analogy, it's like trying to put on other clothes on top of the ones you've already been clothed with. And what ends up happening is that then you have too many layers and you'll be very warm, you'll be very heated, you'll be very uncomfortable. And there are a lot of people in that exact scenario today. What makes matters even worse is that when we attempt to dress ourselves, we don't really look as good as we may think that we do. The scriptures are actually very clear and explicit on this point. Sort of like the old story of the emperor's new clothes. We may think that we're dressing in fine, rich attire, but we're actually naked. Or we're covered in filth. Take, for example, our first scripture today, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. I want you to read this with me, because it's both tragic and it's funny at the same time. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. Ready? One, two, read. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Wow. Notice something very important here in this verse. A great detail here. 
that this is specifically talking about our righteousness. The things that we do that we think are good, the things that we do that we think are righteousness, whatever righteousness that we try to produce ourselves, when we try to work up our own righteousness, when we try to strive to merit what only Christ can give us as a free gift, we may think we're dressing ourselves in fine garments, but in fact they are as filthy rags. And this is not just one man's opinion. Take a look at Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 through 8. Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 through 8. Read this with me too. Ready? One, two, read. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinks that he has confidence in the flesh whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, and as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. Those are powerful words, my friend. Notice that Paul says that we are the circumcision, the ones who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. How much confidence in the flesh? No confidence in the flesh. Uh oh. That's a problem for anyone who's trying to dress themselves in their own righteousness. That's a problem for anyone who's trying to earn favor or to earn merit or the blessings of God by their own obedience or performance. Paul then goes into great detail. He's machine gunning off his very impressive list of his personal qualifications. Keep in mind that Paul was formerly Saul. Paul was a Pharisee of the Law of Moses. He's telling you about his Jewish pedigree. He's telling you about his many works of obedience. He's telling you about his zeal, even going so far back when he was a Pharisee of the Law, he was persecuting the church because he thought it was right. He thought it was the right thing to do. Even going so far as to claim that he was blameless as far as the law of Moses was concerned. So that's a very impressive list of works. What does Paul think of his former works? In verses 7 and 8, what do we see him say about his estimation of everything that he's done? He counts them as loss. When compared to the excellency of Christ, and Christ's gift of righteousness, Paul counts everything else as loss. Even going so far as to say that all of his pedigree, all of his performance is merely dung in favor of Christ. There's a wonderful picture of this in another scripture of Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. So turn there now and let's read that together. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And it shows us a few things about how we can actually have our clothes changed from filth to perfection, from dirty to divine. 
Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Read this with me. Ready? One, two, read. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke to those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with change of garment. And I said, Let them set a fair turban on his head. So they set a fair turban on his head, and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. This is an amazing picture. Here we have Joshua, who was clothed with filthy garments. He was covered in dung, and the accuser Satan was standing right there. But something unexpected happens. Instead of the angel of the Lord rebuking the high priest Joshua, as we would expect, for being covered in dung, you know, that's not the appropriate clothes for a high priest of the Lord to be covered in dung. It's not appropriate. You would expect the Lord to rebuke Joshua, the high priest, saying, why are you covered like this in front of me? You should not be covered like that in front of me. You should not be covered in dung in front of your Lord, Joshua. We would expect God to rebuke Joshua. But instead, he rebukes the accuser, Satan. That's an amazing and unexpected act. And that's only act number one. The second amazing thing that we see here is that the Lord then changes Joshua's clothes. So not only did the Lord not rebuke Joshua, he changed his clothes for him. He removes the filthy dung-covered garments of the high priest and gives Joshua all new clothes. He gives him an all new attire. And the angel of the Lord stood by him. You would expect him to turn his back. You would expect him to turn around. You would expect him to walk away. The Lord does none of those things. Not only does he rebuke Satan, spare Joshua, but then he changes Joshua's clothes for him. This, my dear friend, is exactly what God does for us today as well. When we try to clothe ourselves, the accuser is right there today to point out every single fault, every single failure, every single dirty spot. But our advocate, Jesus, rebukes the accuser and changes our clothes. He changes them to all new garments, unstained, perfectly clean, not based on ourselves, not based on our efforts, not based on our striving or our ability, but based on himself. Galatians chapter 3 verses 26 and 27 make this very clear. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26-27. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has been immersed into Christ, have put on Christ. Think about that. In so doing, by being immersed into Christ, the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 has been fulfilled in you through Jesus Christ. See the beauty in which Jesus has dressed you. The prophecy of Isaiah chapter 61 
Verse 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. That prophecy has been fulfilled by Christ in you, because he has clothed you with his garments of salvation. Today in Christ, your filthy, dung-covered garments are gone. They're gone. They've been replaced with the finest royal attire that comes directly from God. Clothes, not of your own making, but given to you by Jesus Christ himself. That is what you are dressed in. Do you see yourself that way? You should, because that's exactly what Jesus has done for you. Embrace this new identity. Live this new life. And I say to you, with all sincerity, be blessed.